everyone, my name is Monique, welcome to my channel and today is the beginning of a new series called Play and Learn where I show you how to easily create teaching materials that you could use at home, in school, for more interactive, fun learning experiences. So today we're learning about letters and numbers and to create this material is super duper easy. You just need the following materials. You need clothespin that you can get from the dollar store or a craft store or even the grocery and Filipino we call it um, pang sampai or sipet that I'm sure you can get in the wet market or even in the department store. Um, you also need paper plates, markers, and a piece of paper. So you take your marker and divide your paper plate sort of like a pizza pie and write letters on each slice. Choose letters that your child is familiar with or letters that you want to introduce. Then take your clothespin or your seabed and write the corresponding baby letters or small letters on each clothespin. Next, take a clean sheet of paper and divide it into six parts or four parts depending on how many numbers you want to practice with your child. So write the numbers down, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I decided to draw shapes that correspond to the numbers so that I could also review the shapes names with Raphael. But you could choose to draw anything that you think will interest your child. Then like earlier, write the numbers on clothespins. Flip the paper over because we don't want to waste paper, so we're using both sides. And now draw items corresponding to your numbers without having to write the numbers because now we want to work on their quantifying skills. This was actually Raphael's first time to ever see or use clothespin, so he didn't know what to do with them. So as you can see, he just put it on top of the corresponding letter. So also take time to introduce your materials and let your child know what you're doing. M. M? What no, else do you see? No, M. Mm -hmm. And R. R. What R. else? And S. And S. And B. Where's B? Yeah. Over there, can I see? Where's B? Oh, there you go. What letter is this? A. No, this one is the letter? T. T. How about this one? A. A. Do you remember the sound of the letter A? What is the sound of the letter A? Ah, 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 ah. How about the letter M? What is the sound of the letter M? You know what we're gonna do, L? You remember, these are the mommy letters or the big letters, the capital letters. Now we're going to match them with the baby letters. <laughs> Do you want to try it? Yes. Okay, let's see. This is baby. If this is your child's first time with this sort of activity like Raphael here, it's okay if you have to give a lot of support, if you have to give a lot of prompts. I had to show Raphael how to open and close the clothespin many, many times before he actually got it. Ask a lot of questions. Ask your child to name the letters. If he can't name the letter, then you name the letter and turn it into a game and have your child find it. So say something like, I see the letter B. Can you find the letter B? Can you point letter B to me? Also take time to introduce letter sounds. One chant that I've been using for many, many years now, even before Matina was born, goes something like this. What is the sound of the letter T? T, 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 T. And it's just a fun way for kids to remember letter sounds. Also watch your child's interest. As you can see here, I'm showing Raphael two clothespins, asking Raphael to choose which letter he wants to work with. So this changes the activity a little bit. Um, and if you see that your child's interest is waning, remember one of our techniques in the five A's of positive child guidance, which is the first video in our channel. I'm giving Raphael choices, alternatives. So his attention is now taken from, I don't want to work with a clothespin anymore um, to, which clothespin or which letter do I want to use? Working with clothespins is also really great for your children's fine motor muscles or the muscles in their fingers. Now those muscles really need a lot of exercising because these are the muscles that they use to hold on to pencils, to pens, so they'll be able to grasp it better when they're already writing. Let your child figure it out. If your child is having a hard time finding which end of the clothespin to use, don't rescue them, don't move in to do it for them. Let them figure it out for themselves and they're also developing their problem-solving skills. 
was stop. Okay, and this is number? Number 12. No, <laughs> that's two. Two. And this is? Two for blocks. Two blocks. And how about this one? Number? Three. Three. Three for triangles. Three triangles. How about this one? Seven. Num no, four. Four. Four circles. Four circles. How about this one? I mean, circles. Four circles. Four squares. Four circles. Oh, it makes a square? Yes. That's right. It does make a square. How about this number? Five. Five what? Five, four. Five what? Do you know what shape that is? Boats. W boats? Yes. Yeah, when you turn it this way, it does look like a boat, huh? Now we are going to work on identifying numbers and also their matching skills as they match the numbers on paper to the numbers on the clothespins. I have here one, five, this is six, I have here four, three, and two. Okay, this is one. Let me find one. Where's one? Do, 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 do. There you go! Now have your child do the rest. Try to introduce vocabulary for math concepts by saying things like, Oh, these two numbers are the same. Or, the number on this clothespin is the number 5. Can you match it to the number 5 on the paper? Again, give your child space and time to figure things out for himself. If you remember when we started this activity earlier with a paper plate, Rafael didn't even know what to do with the clothespin. He didn't even know what it was for or how to pinch it open. But now he's using one hand to hold the paper and then the other hand to put the clothespin on the paper. And that's really a testament to how children are able to problem solve for themselves. Now from identifying numbers, we move on to quantifying or knowing how many items there are in a group. Again, can we count how many ice cream cones? Count again. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many cones? Five. <laughs> I mean, more. I mean, six cones. Rafael, how many houses? One. One. Okay. Where is the number? One. Oops. Where's the number one? For one house. Where's number one? Can you find number one, L? One. Is that one? Where's number one? One house. There you go. Okay. It's really helpful to know what our child is able to do and in which areas they need support in. For example, you could see here that I take Raphael's fingers and encourage him to point to each item as he counts. When we do this over and over again, hopefully we encourage our children to realize that when they're quantifying objects or when they're counting objects in a group, each item that they point to or each item that they count corresponds to a number. In one of my videos about homeschooling, I talk about how important it is for us to know our child's skill level or where they are starting from so that we can adjust activities like this accordingly. For example, if your child is not able to quantify yet or count the number of objects in a group, you can still do this activity but change it up a little bit. So instead of having your child count the number of objects, you do it for them. For example, you say one, two, three, four. There are four flowers. Now can you find number four for me? So you count it for them and just have them match the number. So keep in mind that children are always, always learning through play. But we can enrich these experiences all the more by presenting them with materials that are purposeful, by thinking about the things that we say and being very intentional and mindful with our interactions. That's it for our first Play and Learn video. If you have anything at home that you think will make a great teaching material, put it down in the comments below and maybe I can make a video about it. So again, my name is Monique. Thank you so much for joining me. And please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with families that you think might learn a thing or two in this video. I will see you soon. But until then, remember to make every day your own version of Extraordinary.